Hello there, my name is Miss Red Nebula, and welcome to another Game Dev in Progress Diary. This is the ongoing progress on my weird little rat game that I'm making, my very first game, which is to be completed over the course of a month, and my drop-dead date for actually finishing this thing is July 14th, so let's see if I get there. Right now the working title is Ratasui. Is this going to be a rat in a sewer, as I mentioned before? Doesn't really look like that just yet, but hang tight until the end of the video and I think we'll get a little bit closer to what we're what we're going for. You may have noticed though that instead of having random items like bombs and all of that, we now have actual pieces of pizza and cookies and little rat poison pellets dropping from the ceiling. So I did manage to get some artwork done. Again, you'll see a little bit more of that in a moment. But I also wanted to mention that I had had an idea. You know, I wanted to have the character able to jump, and there is something else that I'm going to be adding that is relevant to the character being able to jump, but I thought, you know, this mechanic's not really being used for very much, and I wanted to have something else that just make it a little bit more challenging. So the idea that I came up with is the poison pellets, rather than just dropping down into the water, are going to drop down to the ground and then stay there for a set amount of time. And when they do that, of course, as, as soon as you touch them, you get injured by them, so you want to be able to jump over them and avoid them. And I think as soon as I added that, the, the challenge level of the game really started feeling more game-like and less just go here, grab this, go here, grab this, avoid this, you know, making it that much more interesting to play. Not that that was, that was a pretty cool one. And now, here's what it looks like with some of the artwork added in. Of course, we still have the little ducky running around here, but most of the background stuff is now done. Um, the the actual sewer scene itself, there's uh, there's a few things that I'm still going to tweak and fix, like the fact that the shadows on the pipes look a little bit funny, and I would like to have the water coming out of the ugh, waterfall there <laughs> out of that pipe actually moving, because I think that that would look really cool. Some of that is kind of my nice-to-haves, the, the list of things where if I just don't quite get to them by July 14th that they are, you know, maybe upgrades that I can do later down down the line, but they're not things that are necessary for calling this a finished game. And in addition, I added a little bit of an animation down in the, the murky water down underneath where the character's running back and forth. I might do something a little bit more with that later on, but for the moment, at least it gives the eye a little bit more motion to follow. Otherwise, there's still a feral bit to do, some things that are cosmetic, and of course, the game itself still needs to have that challenge curve ramping up, so right now it always goes at the same speed. Eventually it will be that it starts out slow and goes faster and faster and faster, and additional challenges will be added as the game progresses, to the point where it's going nice and quick, you know, at th that point it's just a case of survive as long as you can. Also move the hunger bar over to the side, as there are a few things that I want the player to be able to see happening down at the bottom of the screen, and where the hunger bar was was covering that up. There will also be a timer stroke score up in the opposite corner, but I just haven't added that yet. And if I turn the volume up, then you can hear that I've added some sound effects. Some of these were from free asset packs that are over in the Unity store, and some of them were from this really cool little program called VFXR that I heard a few people talking about in terms of making cute little 8-bit sort of sound effects for mostly for game jams and stuff like that. It's a sound generator that can come up with a, a huge variety of different types of sounds that work really well inside of a game. So the sound of the water that you're hearing is from one of the asset packs, and then uh, the sounds of like that when you when you get a hold of one of the items that is rotting, that will signify your character being slowed down. The little squeak if you hit one of the poison pellets. And let's see, I want to... Come on, pizza! There's a pizza. That little sound of, of the pizza being eaten were all things that were generated in BFXR. Then um, you've got, like, <laughs> of course, as soon as, I, as soon as I want a certain piece to fall, it's not falling. I would like a cookie to fall. 
Oh yeah, and the, and the sound of the jump animation was done in BFXR too. But that little crunch sound when the cookies fall down uh, was from one of those asset packs too. And I think I'll use those for like menu sounds and stuff like that. You'll notice at the moment the bar has gone all the way down, but I haven't died. I'm just that's just for testing purposes right now. And one other huge thing was there was a bug and it was driving me crazy. It was something that would only happen very, very rarely where an item would start to fall and then it would act as though it was being spawned again from the same or a different spawn point. So you can see it here and I'll do a little bit of a slow motion version so you can see what it actually looks like when this was happening. This was driving me nuts, all right? So, I mean, this has been over a week of trying to figure out what on earth was going on with this bug. And I finally got it. And it wasn't my fault, for once, which makes me feel a lot better. There is an instance where, and I'm gonna get a little technical for you for a second, there's an instance where every once in a while in Unity, when something would trigger an on-trigger event, where it would do this and happen more than once in a single frame. So if you have any code that was being triggered by this on-trigger enter event, that code had the potential to be used twice. I had described in one of the previous videos about object pooling, I actually had items that were going into the queue but being entered into the queue more than once because of this bug. When an object is pulled from the queue, it's outside of the queue now, so when it's falling on the screen, it's no longer a queued item. So there should have been no way for that item to be respawned somewhere else. That was why it was like, I don't know what's going on. But because that item had been put back into the queue twice, it was there once and then again one right after the other. And hence why it was respawning that same item again. So... <laughs> This was one of those things where I solved it and I was really, really excited and my husband was looking at me like I was crazy, but I know if there's anybody out there who has also done any kind of programming, you'll know exactly how I felt when I have tracked down this bug and finally managed to fix it. Hooray! <laughs> right, so... I didn't get as much done this week as I would have ordinarily because we did take a little bit of a side jaunt and had a couple of days visiting my dad up in the mountains. Arizona has those and they're really, really beautiful. So I thought I'd just plunk in a couple of videos from our trip as we had a really great time. It was very, very relaxing and much needed. I think that's the first time that we've taken any kind of vacation away from the house Oh, for about five, six years, something like that. Anybody out there who also does any kind of work at home, just remember to occasionally take a break. Take a breather. It will do you so much good. We went hiking. We got to see this enormous herd of elk. It was just so cool. We had a couple, several deer wandering around. And we even saw a wild turkey, but I didn't get that one on video because I was driving at the time and well, we didn't have the camera out for Robbie to take any pictures of it. Anyway, I'm going to stop yammering. I've still got a bunch of work to do on this and obviously several more projects that I'm working on. Feel free to like or comment. And if you want random updates from my little world of art and gaming, subscribe. If you enjoy what I do and are interested in supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. A big thank you to my current patrons. That's all for now. Bye.